I'm pleased to speak to you today about Franco Nevada's second quarter financial results. Franco Nevada had a strong second quarter, continuing to build on the momentum from first quarter. The diversified portfolio performed well, generating record geos, revenues, adjusted EBITDA, and adjusted net income. Margins were again strong at over 80% adjusted EBITDA and 50% adjusted net income. We set another gold equivalent ounces record in the second quarter and have seen steady increase in geo sold over the last number of quarters. Our Q2 financial results did include the first revenue from the newly acquired Valley Iron Ore Debentures. This, along with the ongoing ramp up at Cobre Panama and higher deliveries from Guadalupe and Anthemina streams were the other main drivers of the increase. For the second half of 2021, we do expect our portfolio to continue its strong performance, but we'll see lower deliveries and revenues from a couple of assets. Taziest, as it recovers from the mill fire, and Hemlo, with less production on our royalty ground. With the continued strong performance of our mining assets, we are narrowing the geo-sold guidance range for 2021 to 590,000 to 615,000, from the previous 580,000 to 615,000 geo sold. With the recovery in oil and gas prices, energy revenues for the quarter were again well ahead of our guidance. As a result, we're pleased to increase our revenue guidance range for the year to 155 million to 170 million. Within the industry, a theme of this reporting season has been cost inflation, with increases in labor, materials, and energy, amongst others. This is where the Franco Nevada business model shines. Our revenue-based royalties and streams are not impacted by cost inflation. We operate with a small headcount and effectively a fixed cost structure. The margin generation when commodity prices increase flows to the bottom line. In fact, Franco Nevada has leveraged to inflation as when energy and steel prices increase, we actually benefit from our portfolio of energy and iron ore royalties. On the acquisition front, we continue to be active in adding good assets. We've announced greater than $850 million in deals thus far in 2021. During the quarter, as I mentioned, we did acquire a tranche of Valet Royalty debentures. The Valet interests, along with our Labrador Iron Ore Royalty Company investment, add to our base of low risk, long life cash flow, and further enhance the diversity of our portfolio. With these additions, the portfolio remains more than 80% precious metal focused. We expect it to earn a good return on the Valley debentures based on the long-term consensus outlook, which actually calls for declining iron ore prices. However, if current record high prices remain, we'll do even better. 2021 is shaping up to be another strong growth year for Franco Nevada, with a larger contribution from Cobre Panama, as well as the new acquisitions, Condestable, Haynesville, and the Valley debentures. We're guiding to 25% growth over five years from 2020, with organic mine expansions and new mines driving that growth. Cobre Panama, Detour, Stillwater, and Tazieist are all being expanded over the period. Goldfields reports that Solaris Norte construction is on track, and we expect the development of Hard Rock, Valentine Lake, and Stibnite gold mines to follow. With an impressive PFS recently published, Skeena Resources SK Creek is also moving up that development timeline. Continued strong copper prices bode well for our pipeline of longer term copper development assets, Alpala, Takataka, and Nuevo Union, amongst others. One of the larger long term options that we have in our portfolio is our royalties on the Ring of Fire chrome and eagle nickel deposits. These are based in Northern Ontario and the agreed acquisition by BHP of Norant Resources is a big step to making development of those assets a reality. In summary, Franco Nevada continues to deliver with record financial performance, built-in growth, and tremendous long-term optionality. We're cash positive with no debt, have 1.4 billion in available capital, and are generating operating cash flow at a rate of a billion dollars per year. We're focused on continuing to grow the company with adding more precious metal assets and are seeing a good pipeline of opportunities to do so.